Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Mel McKenzie, Strategic Commercial Manager for the Commercial and Procurement Shared Service, which covers Aberdeen City, Aberdeen Shire and Highland Council. I'm delighted to be here today to speak to you all at the First Meet the Buyer event being held in Aberdeen. Of course, the sixth annual event, not the First Meet the Buyer event. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about the practicalities um, around how you can do business with the three councils we represent um, and the potential opportunities that are available coming through the pipeline and also where you can access support um, for local SMEs. I'm going to try and keep this relatively short, about 10 minutes, and there will hopefully there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end. A little bit of background on the Commercial and Procurement Shared Service. Um, this is a partnership between three councils, um, who I mentioned already, um, which operates under a shared service arrangement. We provide services across um, category management, social care commissioning, commercial management, uh, legal and data services. We work closely with colleagues and teams across each of the councils supporting their needs um, and in collaboration with um, services such as economic development, teams with input around community benefits and colleagues involved in capital procurement where there is devolved responsibility. Our overall vision for delivery of services is to deliver innovative, sustainable, cost-effective and high-quality strategic procurement services maximising outcomes and values and fostering collaboration. This next slide here shows the scale of the three councils spend annually. Um, so this is based on the full financial year 22-23 figures. Um, maybe just to say this is based on all arrangements and new procurements in that financial year. Um, but Aberdeen City Council issued regulated procurement notices in this period um, to a value of 306 million, um, with a further 11 million through quick quotes. In the same period, Aberdeenshire issued regulated contract notices for to a value of 55 million, with a further 23.5 million through quick quotes. And Highland Council issued regulated contract notices with a value of 142 million, with 27.5 million through quick quotes. And I think as um, Councillor Allard said in his um, comments earlier, um, construction, capital procurement is an area where there is significant opportunity. Um, so construction accounted for £500 million of spend across those three councils in financial year 22-23. Um, some other high spend areas include social care, property maintenance and management and utilities. So I guess just in terms a little bit about how our processes work, as public bodies we need to ensure compliance with both legislation and our own internal governance, which is why we do tender. Um, we, the legislation is intended to support equal treatment, transparency, access to opportunities and also delivery of best value for public sector bodies. Um, any assessment to, deter to determine whether a tender exercise required is based upon what is the value of that contract over the duration and whether that's one-off or an ongoing requirement. Once we have determined there is a need for a tender opportunity, we then structure how we approach that based on a number of questions. Um, so how can we best meet the the demand um, and how do we structure those requirements in the terms of contract. Um, are there any available frameworks or dynamic purchasing systems that we can make use of, um, such as with partners such as Crown Commercial Services or Scotland Excel? Um, what outcomes will be met through the contract and how does that meet, meet local national priorities? Um, what are the outcomes to be delivered? Um, I think you know the figure of 63.5% around community benefits, inclusion rate, um, we strive to try and include um, community benefits in all our contracts where it's proportionate and relevant to do so. And in the figures for Aberdeen City, I think we're currently sitting about 94% inclusion rate for community benefits. Um, so we also look at um, market conditions and conducting market engagement where it's appropriate to do so in the development of a procurement process tender exercise um, and we're certainly moving towards more targeted supplier engagement events um, 
based on our tender pipeline. Um, to access opportunities, ensure you are registered on the relevant tender portals, so Public Contracts Scotland, um, Public Contracts uh, Public PCST, so Public Contracts Scotland Tender. Um, make sure that you are registered with SDP. I'm sure all of you are here today. You probably are registered. Um, but registration is free on all of those sites. Um, really important, though, particularly for Public Contracts Scotland. Um, and Public Contract Scotland tender that you ensure your profile is up to date, contact names are current because that way when we're reaching out in terms of opportunities and um, particularly around quick quotes, those are going to the right people and those people are also receiving alerts which are set up in the system. Um, for the Commercial and Procurement Shared Service we also have a LinkedIn page and um, so if you search Commercial and Procurement Shared Services um, we are using LinkedIn more regularly to promote events and also where, re um, where relevant published tender opportunities. Um, also to highlight some framework opportunities that Scotland Excel have published, for example. Um, so really trying to use that as a tool to engage more with suppliers as well. Um, further supports available. Um, so we have procurement development officers who have been appointed to support both Shire and city businesses and plans around community wealth building. Uh, Julie McLean and Nadine Jabali are available to assist local businesses in Aberdeenshire and Aberdeen respectively, providing support for either direct or subcontracting opportunities. Um, the work of the Procurement Development Officers is intended to support local supply chains, to explore public sector opportunities and therefore supporting the local economy. Um, I've put their email addresses up on the screen. Um, both Julie and Nadine are here today, um, so please take the chance to go and speak to them. Um, we are also planning um, a series of business breakfasts, so we'll be supporting um, the events that Julie and Nadine are holding. So there's one in Aberdeen City Townhouse on the 3rd of October, and there are two planned for Aberdeenshire, Inverurie on the 8th of November, and Stonehaven on the 15th of November. And we'll be posting updates on those on social media. Okay, so a little bit around some upcoming opportunities. Um, there is an upcoming opportunity for electric vehicle infrastructure. Um, this will be a four council collaborative procurement exercise. Um, the Shared Service Councils plus Murray Council. Um, we are looking for a partner for EV infrastructure. So that will be the install, maintenance, etc. And we anticipate that there will be opportunities within the supply chain for local suppliers, particularly around the install and maintenance. Um, the heat network, this is something which is specific to Aberdeen City. Um, there will be a procurement coming out um, shortly for a feasibility study um, and subsequently for a design and build. Again with this one, particularly around the design and build, we expect there to be local supply chain opportunities. For Aberdeenshire, there's a minor works framework which is due to be published shortly. Um, so this procurement is designed to establish a framework across nine trade categories and also six geographical sublots within Aberdeenshire. So this is for the de delivery of minor works projects. Um, we have some consultancy frameworks um, that are being set up for Aberdeen City. Um, so structural engineering and mechanical engineering and also a civic hospitality opportunity for Highland Council. Um, that's for the Inverness Townhouse catering and event opportunity. Um, this is just a sample of the upcoming procurement opportunities we have. We are due to publish our annual reports for each council over the next kind of four weeks. Um, those will be on the council's websites and they'll, each of those inclu includes a future regulated procurement pipeline. And those will be posted on each of the council's websites um, on the procurement pages um, where we not only publish our annual reports, we also publish our contract registers and we publish things like our joint procurement strategy. Um, so a good place to go to to find some initial information, contacts for procurement teams, etc. All right, thank you very much um, for listening to me and I will take any questions now. We have had a couple in through the app, so we can start with those. Um, somebody's asking about what are your sustainability requirements? That will differ between contracts. Um, we will generally include some sort of environmental sustainability criteria. Um, but as I say, it really does 
differ depending on whether it's a capital project or for something else. Um, we have kind of an approach that's outlined within our guidance and we then tailor that to each individual procurement opportunity. That's great. Have we got any hands up in the room? Any questions in the room? There we go. There's a lady at the back there. You've got a microphone? There you go. Hi there. Uh, Jill Joy from Intend. We've noticed quite a few local authorities with their quick quotes are starting to um, set internal rules that maybe three to four out of the people invited come from that local authority. And I just wondered if you had plans to do similar. Um, that's something we're currently looking at um, as we're reviewing our procurement guidance at the moment. Thank you. Any other questions in the room? Do you anticipate any opportunities for the third sector? Um, we've not identified any specific opportunities right now, um, but we are keen to work with the third sector wherever possible. Um, so please come and speak to us today about what's coming up in the pipeline, if there are any third sector organisations here, and we can have a discussion down about that. Thank you for that. Um, another question that's come in in the app is, is it only big companies that can bid for work? Um, not at all. Um, we have lots of, you know, through, you know, through the spend you'll see the scale of what we do is vast. Um, but actually there are a number of procurements across any year. Some of those are structured where we have a main contractor and opportunities through the supply chain. But there are plenty of opportunity for small to medium enterprises um, and local businesses. And I guess part of today is about the opportunity to meet some of the supply chain contractors that are in the room as well. So you can introduce your business to them and they're maybe delivering some of the contracts for many of the councils and other organisations out there. So you meet the buyers off in a route to market through different channels. So please take time to go out to the exhibition hall and meet all those different organisations out there. Got any other questions on the floor? Come on now, don't be shy. Hands up. <laughs> Oh, we've got a shy audience today, Mel. <laughs> if you could give somebody a top tip for bidding for any of your contracts, what would that be? Really, really make sure that you read the questions carefully and answer the questions that are being asked. Um, try not to get into putting in sales and marketing type answers, but really tailor your question, your responses to what the local authority is asking for. That's a great, great top tip.